Hornets, who landed the number two pick <laughs> in the NBA draft. Number two again. Sound familiar? Yeah, I feel like this is deja vu. I don't know how this keeps happening, but the Hornets get the number two pick right when you want, you know, Shaq or Dwight Howard or <laughs> Anthony Davis. Oh. You settle for Michael Kidd Gilchrist, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a consolation. Oh, my God. T Tate, of course, big Charlotte guy, mostly known for North Carolina Tar Heels, but also a, a Hornets fan, a former Bobcats fan. Now I don't know about the Bobcats. <laughs> I would put I would, you got to make sure you put tortured in there. Yeah, because it just anytime you talk about your your energy when you talk about UNC as opposed to the Hornets. I mean, you were arguing against the Hornets getting women. Yeah, that, which is like an amazing like self intentional <laughs> well, self own that you don't see very much. New Orleans stole the original Hornets, right? And I still think that they have our good fortune, right? I feel like Zion would have been on the Hornets if they never left. You know what I mean? And Anthony Davis as well. We we just don't know what we're doing in Charlotte, and we'll talk about that, of course. Of, of course. Well, I mean, they're in a position now where they have LaMelo Ball, who's the face of their franchise, a, a former top pick, and he's a great young player. You land number two, and available at that slot is Scoot Henderson, G League Ignite point guard, you know, six foot two, high flying, athletic guard, can pass a little bit, pull up guy, not the perfect fit with LaMelo. And then Brandon Miller, six nine, forward. Do like three level score, lean, skinny, needs to get stronger as he showed at Alabama over the season. Can pass a bit too, better defender than Scoot. A lot of people consider Scoot the higher upside guy. I personally prefer Miller. Charlotte's got a big decision here and it's going to really steer the direction of how they're building with Lamelo. Do you have any sense, Tate, of what way the Hornets might be leaning with the number two pick here? Because this is really where the draft starts with Wemby going number one. Um, I know in your draft guide, you have Brandon Miller. I like Brandon Miller as like a 6'9 shooting guard, someone that can initiate his own offense. I like that he has, you know, he's a head-up dribbler, right? He's looking for guys. He makes plays for himself, makes plays for others. I think he would be a great fit there. And it sounds like early on, Charlotte is putting out that, you know, Brandon Miller would probably be a fit for them more okay. so than Scoot. And maybe okay. that's because of LaMelo. Who knows? Interesting. Do you do you have any sense if this is something that could be like early on smoke screens? Could do you think it's solid? I mean, how do you feel about the, like the uh, how reliable that is this early on? I have been, um, you know, I've been told things before, and they have gone different directions. Like I, one example, for, you know, was Donovan Mitchell, right? It was a Charlotte Hornet. That was what everyone knew. It was kind of like a foregone conclusion. And then Malik Monk slips in the draft. Michael Jordan says, "I remember watching this guy score forty seven <laughs> points there in person." Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, and we know. The rest is history. Malik Monk ends up going 11th. Uh, Donovan Mitchell ends up not signing with Jordan. And, you know, that's just how things happen in the draft. But I think as of right now, the Hornets probably are going to put out to the world and with their headlines that Brandon Miller is the pick, which is good for Portland, right? Because they're shopping that third pick. And if you believe in Scoot Henderson being a franchise level player, maybe they have a, you know, a better ability to shop that pick. I think either one of those players works uh, hypothetically with LaMelo. I think the beauty of LaMelo uh, is his game, which is just <laughs> fun to watch. Uh, I, I, but I think his like kind of pliability in the half court, people think of him as like when he came into the league, you were like, okay, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. He's just going to, everything's going to kind of be Trey Young style. He's going to dictate everything. And he doesn't play like that. Uh, LaMelo is very comfortable. He's kind of, he's more of the Steph, uh, species of player than I'm not trying to compare them directly, but I mean that in that, like he'll come into a half court set, you know, pass the ball, make a cut. He's really willing to move off the ball. He's a pretty solid relocation shooter from three. And I th honestly think like, if you look at them, the two of them side by side, a, I think that Brandon Miller and scoot are kind of on the same level as passers. I don't know that people who have like, maybe not paid, super close attention to would, would know that. But uh, of course, it's just my opinion. But like Scoot, I think we'd give them, he could take on ball assignments. He could be a ball pressure guy. He can give you some rim pressure. And I, I just think the two of them have a nice dynamic that would sort of flow together. I, and I think that's mainly driven by the fact that LaMelo, and you put LaMelo's passing within the flow of their offense, I think it could lead to some pretty promising things. Yeah, I see a lot of hockey assists in the future with LaMelo, oh, yeah. and I like him as kind of a de facto two guard. You know, I, I think that he has the size to be a two guard. I don't think it's going to hurt them on the defensive end. And if you have someone that can get downhill like Scoot, it takes pressure off LaMelo, probably gives him more space to shoot the ball because, like you said, he's a Steph species. And if you have someone that can get downhill and create space for you, drive and kick, 
I mean, those things all check the box. So some of the early stuff I saw about maybe you shop LaMelo for Scoot, I think they nah, actually no. could play together. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. Don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Please it's a don't talent that. level there on different planets, I think. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I think, Kyle, you're right on. I mean, they, they could connect. Like Tate said, a lot of hockey assists potentially in their future if it's Scoot and LaMelo. And the ball pressure aspect, you're right. Like, that's what Scoot would add. You know, getting to the basket. Rim pressure, I should say, getting to the basket, you know, driving. It's both, kick, it's both guarding the ball and yes, attacking for, the basket. For yeah. sure. And I think, you know, the reason why I lean towards Miller, which is why it's interesting that that's what's floating out there right now with Miller possibly being. I'm pretty you know, sure Kupchak already did an interview where he kind of said, you know, they like Brandon Miller's game. We saw Malika at the lottery show. She asked about Brandon Miller to Woj. He said the teams, as they're doing their evaluations, they feel fine taking him number two, number three. So Yeah, and I just think the playmaking ability is there. I mean, we've seen him have so many chase down blocks over the season in Alabama, the willingness to take charges. I, I just think the defensive versatility he would add to that team if you re sign PJ Washington, a restricted free agent this offseason. You've got Mark Williams, who helps you have one of the top defenses in the second half of the season as a rookie big. Suddenly, if you got PJ and Mark Williams and Brandon Miller, Dennis and Smith Jr., Lame- nice I mean, veteran. Oh, lest sure. we forget Nick Richards, folks. Come yeah, on, right. Right. Yeah. come on. Solid. Who, who picked Kentucky because his favorite color was blue? One of my favorite <laughs> recruitment stories ever. <laughs> Oh, I mean, as Charlotte, man. I mean, you know, the roster is they had they had high odds for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's not a good team. Lamelo missed a lot of games, but there's, but there's something there. There's something there, but they they have to get it right with this pick. They have to. They can't have a whiff. There were little little inklings of defensive traction for them towards the end of the year that were like they were there. You Dennis had to be paying Smith, attention. Mark Williams, it's there. Yeah, the re mm-hmm. the rejuvenation of Dennis Smith's career. But yeah, I think Miller fits with them for the reason. I think handle is the key thing. If you're that size and you can handle the ball and shoot, it just opens up so many developmental pathways. And he seems self aware. Like you said, we talked to him earlier. You talked to him in Houston about his ability to get to the basket. I think it's less a question of of like whether or not he can. And it's more of a physical question for me, for him, whether he's going to be able to become a good finisher. Probably more like Jason Tatum, honestly, the way he's had to develop and sort of weaponize his scoring and playmaking ability. But, yeah, you add another handler like that that's 6'9". Why not? And imagine a backcourt if he were to become a two-guard, like some people have speculated. If you have a six foot six point guard and a six foot nine two guard that's a mismatch. I mean, that's hard to deal with when you get to, to get to the playoffs. So I, I think that would be fun. I mean, I hope the Hornets are in the playoffs soon for your own sake. Tate. <laughs> hey, we'll take the play in. We'll take the play in. <laughs>